These people don't exist. These are fake faces made by StyleGAN2, a generative adversarial network. Using such a GAN, you can make a cool, trippy video like this, with faces shifting and morphing from one person to another, while somewhat plausible throughout. Such GANs are super neato, but present a problem with, for instance, catfishing. If you date someone online, you want to make sure that they are who they say they are, and not a con artist or an evil robot. You might do this by feeding their profile picture into a reverse image search to see if they're bumming some supermodel's portfolio shots. But a profile picture produced by a GAN might look like a real attractive person, and it wouldn't pop up in a reverse image search, helping catfishers seem authentic. To check if someone is really real, we have to resort to new methods. Somehow, technology has wrapped back around to identifying doppelgangers by counting teeth. I'm interested in making one of these shape-shifting videos. Let's make a GAN produce psychedelic morphing squids. You have never seen art in your life. When you try to make art, you don't know if you did any good. But it is your dream to put your fake art in a museum. You know a guy who donates real art to a museum, but he doesn't know what art looks like either. So you give him some fake art and he tries donating it. He doesn't know any better. But the museum's curator does know art and easily separates your fakes from the real deal. The curator tells the donor, look, these ones are real, these ones are fake. The donor learns to spot your handiwork in relation to actual art. He won't be fooled so easily next time. But next time you meet, you give your donor a few drinks. When you're sure they won't remember any of this in the morning, you show them some of your fake art and say, hey, look at all this totally authentic art I found. Your donor says, that's a fake. Here's how I can tell. You make some more fake art and try again. And eventually your donor says, yep, that looks like real art to me. In the morning, when the hangover wears off, you offload your improved fakes onto the donor and they naively bring them to the museum. Once more, the curator separates your fakes from the real deal, and once more, the donor learns to tell the difference. If you do this for a while, you and the donor improve enough that your fake art starts looking pretty good. And remember, you've still never seen real art. You've improved by learning to trick someone who's learning alongside you. This is my understanding of a generative adversarial network. Red is the generator, Villager is the discriminator, and Blathers here is just the actual labels real and fake. Red will never fool Blathers, but his fake art might eventually look pretty convincing to us, and that's all we're really after. There's a whole lot of math involved, but even though I'm a mathematician and a data scientist, I'm doing this for fun. L let's focus on the fun parts. My first step was copy-pasting a generative adversarial network tutorial example to make sure it worked, and I wasn't going mad. That example was written to use the classic MNIST dataset of handwritten numbers. Each number is a 28 by 28 grayscale image, which is really a 28 by 28 matrix of values from 0 to 255. How does the villager, the discriminator, look at these images? The tutorial example uses 5 by 5 convolution, which means it scans the image with filters, which are 5 by 5 matrices. Moving the filters over an image produces a big ol' stack of information about how pixels relate to one another. The tutorial uses same padding, which means to preserve the image's 28 by 28 shape, it puts enough zeros around the edges that the corners of the image get to be the center of the filters. The tutorial also uses strides of size 2, meaning that the filters skip rows and columns. With the strides and the padding, the convolution makes a 28 by 28 matrix into a 14 by 14 matrix, with a layer for every filter. The tutorial does this twice, so 14 by 14 is reduced to 7 by 7. Then this matrix is flattened, and a connected layer results in a single value. 0 if the image is really a handwritten number, and 1 if the image is a fake. 
So the discriminator doesn't look at art in the holistic way we do. It interprets art by the relationships between its pixels. How does red, the generator, generate images? It starts with random noise. These seeds are fed through transpose convolution, which is like convolution reversed. Instead of making a square of values into one, one value is made into a square. In transpose convolution, strides make the image bigger instead of smaller, a process called upsampling. The generator goes from 7x7 seven seven to 14x14 14 14 to 28x28. 28 28. When you put red and the villager together to make the whole generative adversarial network, we start by feeding random noise to the generator to make some fake art. The fakes and some real art are fed through the discriminator, which learns to detect the fakes. Then the discriminator is locked so it can't train, and the generator learns to trick it. This back and forth is a single epoch, and after however many epochs, the generator does pretty well. But even if the GAN is done learning, I'm not. I read some articles and decided to implement all of the tools they discussed, like a curious eater sampling a buffet. This article, for instance, notes that transpose convolution can leave generated images with unsatisfying checkerboard artifacts, which I noticed in some of my outputs. They recommend just upsampling and then performing ordinary convolution for a smoother image output. I implemented reflective padding, so instead of wrapping images with zeros, the images are wrapped with reflections of the image itself, making the edges of the output more convincing. I experimented with dilated convolution, which expands the filters to cover more of the image, increasing the receptive field without the computational costs of enormous filters. One piece of advice I didn't expect is handicapping the discriminator. If the discriminator does too well, the generator collapses. No matter what random noise it gets to start, its fake art looks the same every time, because it's constantly producing only the exact image it thinks will best fool the discriminator, which doesn't really look like anything at all. So we give the generator a boost by giving the discriminator a hard time. First, we apply random noise to every image the discriminator gets, real or fake, as if we were blowing a fine layer of dust over it. Then, when training the discriminator, we give it noisy labels. We don't label real art 0 and fake art 1. We label real art from 0 to 0.1, and we label fake art from 1 to 0.9. Some articles even recommended swapping some labels so the discriminator gets fakes labeled as real and vice versa, as if Red is paying off blathers to give the villager a hard time. Dropout layers, which force models to ignore some percentage of the data, prevent overfitting and keep the models generalizable. Anyway, that's enough explanation. Let's get this model running on the MNIST dataset. I made some random seeds and fed them through the generator every epoch to track its progress. Let's watch. Okay, cool. Those look like numbers to me. Next, I generated another list of random seeds. I fed the first seed into the generator, then transitioned to the next seed step by step, and then transitioned to the next seed step by step. Those are some shape-shifting numbers, and they look like numbers the whole time. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Next, I applied the same GAN setup to the squid pictures I used in my last data science video. These squids aren't 28 by 28. They're 108 by 48 by 3 for red, green, blue color. But that actually doesn't change much. The convolution filters just become three-layered too. So let's give it a go. Okay, wow. I wouldn't mistake these for real squids, but they look pretty good. We can see the face turning from head on to stage left, and the tentacles are delightfully psychedelic. My only problem is the eyes and face. The generator is giving the squids the same incoherent expression every time. But now that I've made numbers and squids, let's try something hard enough to show us the limits of our GAN. I found a nice data set of Pokemon pictures. I flipped some pictures so all the Pokémon faced left. 
I deleted some pictures I thought were too complicated, and I converted all the pictures to grayscale. I would describe the resulting dataset as black and white super cuties pointing that away. Can my GAN make us a new Pokemon like that? Well, here's the training. And here's the shape-shifting afterward. Hmm. Hmm. Honestly, I'd describe these as barely Pokemon-themed vomit. Which I suppose makes sense. Numbers are pretty consistent. My squids are very consistent. Even human faces have lots of traits in common. But Pokemon are all over the place. I can't blame my Gan for being equally all over the place. Maybe it would do better if I let it train for, like, a hundred hours. But that sounds like too much thinking even for Thinkster. I hope you enjoyed watching me get my tentacles dirty practicing deep learning. I don't think my results are particularly novel or impressive, but this channel is basically my public video diary, so sometimes you get to watch me waffle for a while. I've left a link in the description to a GitHub page where you can download the code and datasets I used. If you can make better Pokemon-inspired blobs, I'd love to see them. Bye bye <laughs>